Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us just talk a little bit about narratives. I had gone in a sort of a rambling video on about things that have captivated or distracted the Church of Jesus Christ from our gospel mission, from teaching and preaching the Word of God, living a holy life, trying to exalt Jesus, not putting the light on ourselves, but everything for the glory of God in truth. So it's not a sloppy faith, a sloppy love, sloppy agape, whatever, but it is a love and it is a walk tempered like a blacksmith working in the forge. It's tempered by virtue. So how do we know what is true in this world? Well, as believers, as Christians, those of us, and I say this in case someone's listening and doesn't understand, those of us who have come by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ with a heart of repentance, knowing that we cannot save ourselves, we who are washed in the blood of Jesus have our names written down in his book of life, the Lamb's great book of life. So I speak to those who know Jesus. Now, it is easy for the Christ, uh, for, for the church of Christ to get distracted. We see that now if we can just tune out the noise of all of these things, these issues going on, and get back to the signal, which is the divinely Holy Ghost written Word of God. Don't let any man, anyone, rob you of your faith in the Word of God, especially these who are highly titled and accredited and academically approved and all of that. Certainly nothing wrong with going and learning a whole lot about your subject. But when you believe that God has not preserved his word, that it is not relevant for today, or that it is fraught with errors, then you yourself will be a beta Christian. You will not be an alpha Christian. You will not be strong in Christ because you will not have anything that you can truly lean upon. Let me read you this verse here in Proverbs. Proverbs 14 and 15. We talked about narratives. We talked about getting away from the Word of God. The simple believe every word. Or in my King James, the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. So we have people that are accredited, titled, whatever, that have a good presence in whatever the world um, approves of, social media in this era. In other areas, it was who you knew, and in many societies, it still is. But regardless, these narratives that we believe must be founded upon the Word of God. But the simple, and, and I see it. I said I live in the Bible Belt, but to me, it's the church belt. A lot of great people love, love the Lord, but they should be so much further down the pike when it comes to understanding the Word of God. Thus we will have discernment and wisdom and knowledge to recognize the Luciferian attack that is upon our societies, upon the churches, in the churches, and we will be able to call it out. I've just been one to study the scriptures and I've gotten caught with different groups early on and had to learn how there are extremes in the professing church of Jesus Christ, but it was Thank God that he had me to continue to diligently study the word, finally getting an open mind and an open heart and being humble with his help to understand the truth in the spirit of Psalm 25, as I've referenced many times, fear the Lord and meekness before him. Those two things, God will reveal great truths from his word. And I do believe with that, in that spirit, and this is me speaking, that he will show you great things in this world that are mysteries. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. But it is the work, it is the noble venture of kings, and I take that to mean anybody that is really seeking for truth with a noble heart. It is good to seek these things out. There's nothing wrong. And I do believe if you are, you do have those two qualities that I mentioned in, in Psalm 25, God will show you many things. Now, the Church of Christ has gotten away from the Word, obviously, in many respects. I'm not talking about the denominational differences 
although it's pretty abundantly clear that men and women who have grown up in a church or have become Christians later in life and then went into a church that they get taught a certain spin on the Bible, a certain doctrinal viewpoint, whether it's Calvinism, extreme free will, a mix somewhere in the middle, um, different views on eschatology or prophecy, maybe different views on creation, the age old um, new age theory and all, all of this. I'm not going to get into that on this video, but in it is it is disappointing and I was one of them as a young young Christian that we think that we have a lock on truth because the people that we are you know going to church with they love us and we've learned this and we think that thus we are we are the ones we've arrived and everybody else is somewhat in error well of course that's not true and it is through diligent study of the Word of God with a humble heart, trying to wipe the slate clean of all doctrinal viewpoints, and it is so hard to do it. But whenever you pick up the Word, it's like Jesus said, they that come to the kingdom of God must come as little children. And that's how I certainly believe that we come before the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. We come before him as little children, and thus he's going to show us things. When your discernment and your wisdom, I certainly need a whole lot more wisdom, but when your discernment is sharper as a Christian, then you will be able to see these things. It will be so blindingly obvious that you want to just stand up in the church and say, do you not understand this? And do you not? And I'm talking about major issues, major themes and narratives that are being pushed. So this message is not to criticize Big Eva, okay, which is just a little way of saying big evangelical churches. Um, it's not to criticize pastors, although I certainly have, but there, I always have said there, God has his, his uh, faithful ones out there. Thank God for that. But it is to point out that, that you and I, we need to be aware. Matthew 24 speaks about it. Jesus says, be not deceived, be not deceived. Not just be not deceived about who is Christ and what is the way to eternal life, who is the way to eternal life. But these narratives that have come in and taken us off of the work of God and don't think for a second that Satan now that he's lost your soul, he's not going to continue to dog you in your life to get you to do anything but pray, but read the scriptures, but fellowship, but witness, but testify and serve and intercede for others. Big part of that. I, I try to stress that interceding for others in prayer, not just for saved our brothers and sisters, but for those out here in this world trying to make our societies better. So Satan's very much into that. Now I've, I'm probably getting a little long on this video, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit some scripture. Many Christians, if we would realize that yes, God's in control, but we've got a job here. I, I, I have people around me that say, relax brother, God's in control. Oh, I know he's sovereign, but if you're using that as an excuse, and some of them are, in fact, most of them are, to not be concerned and not be serving and striving, then they're in disobedience to the Word of God. Occupy till I come, Jesus said. Be the salt and the light. Take dominion. Bring into submission everything that we can to the ways and the name of Jesus Christ. But here's what, here's, here's what the Scripture says um, in Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words, Psalm 12, verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful, powerful, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When you give someone scripture, that 
is what God wants us to do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we give somebody scripture, that is going to work in their heart. Now they may hate it. They may reject it immediately. The flesh doesn't like the scriptures. We get that. But it's a lot better than just telling them, you know, God's good, God's this, God's that. That's great, too, that you brought God up. And, and that may be more than many of us are doing. But scripture really is what's required, especially within the house of God. So that if we would study and know the scripture, we would not fall, as this simple man does here in Proverbs, to believe everything, to follow false narratives. Um, yeah, I was going to get into something that was said to me the other day that I'm still shaking my head over. The, <laughs> the zeal of some of these false narratives um, that are not commanded us in Scripture is absolutely incredible. I don't know if I should get into it because I kind of touched on this before in my last video. But let us be strong in Christ. Let us, as it says in Ephesians, take the full armor of God. And, and what is that last piece of armor? Well, it's actually the only offensive weapon. Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I love this, and I'll leave you on this. Ephesians is, is speaking about husband and wife relationship. But then here in Ephesians 5 and 26, it says... Well, in 25 it says, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Uh, people say, well, I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. We are still in the flesh. I know what Romans says, that we're in the spirit because we, we, this, we have the Spirit of Christ, but as Paul also said in that same book, we are battling against the flesh daily. We need the Word of God. We need our private devotions. We need to hear the Word of God. We need to hear different perspectives, different, um, different emphases on doctrine. But when, you're, when you know the Scriptures, you're going to be able to discern and call out and I, pr I wish people would do this, especially for the younger Christians, not younger in age, but younger in the Lord, to point to them, don't finance this false narrative. Don't push this out there. We have enough with living a holy life and serving Jesus Christ and being faithful to the gospel mission than to get caught up with all that noise. We've got a very specific signal and if we would get into it, we will overcome.